<laughs> Why didn't I get those questions? <laughs> yeah, you got those questions. Right, two hours. I'll give you because one of these. Two hours. No, like, would you fuck your cousin? Yeah, would you? Well, he's a handsome fellow. <laughs> <laughs>
Mm -mm. This, so it's like, so now you tell people it's 10 in the morning, but you give us real alcohol. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's how it works. I'm Ooh. screwed. <laughs> right. Shattered. Well, let's, uh, let's do some more alcohol before we get started. Mm. We're doing a shot, mm -hmm. um, which looks like it could be radioactive. I'm not sure. 100%. Um, it's called the leg spreader. The leg spreader. Yeah, the leg spreader. And it's a uh, one part vodka, one part Midori. I don't spread my legs before 12. Vodka and Midori? Wow. Vodka and Midori? Vodka and Midori. One more time, vodka and Midori. So, it, uh, interesting, I, interesting. Thing. Please, I, do whatever I, I you can this. to stall I, this inevitable <laughs> atrocity. <right? laughs> it's, it's the melon liqueur, it's from Japan. Mm. Um, when was it invented, do you think? <laughs> Just I, I can actually pretty much tell you it was in the early 80s, I believe, or, or, or late 70s. My mother used to have... <laughs> my, my mother, <laughs> my, my mother. mother. My mother's a beautiful <laughs> woman. No, my mother uh, had a, a company that, she worked for a place, um, uh, like a, a liquor distributor in, in New England, and she would do uh, these tastings at restaurants and, and bars and things like that. I used to tell the teachers, uh, they said, what are your parents doing? I said, she I don't know my dad, night. but my mom works at night with a bunch of pretty women, and they go to bars and restaurants. And they thought she was a madam. I'm not kidding, this is a true story. But Midori was her first account. I was the only kid, like in the fifth, sixth grade, going to school with like melon ball T-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> we, we get free stuff, and I'm like, that's cool. I didn't know it was a, but they, I, I have a lot of experience with, with Maduri, uh, just not drinking it. Well, okay, I was gonna say, no one should have a lot of experience with Maduri. With melon. Liqueur. I don't know if we've ever had a shot with Maduri in it before. Uh, uh, we must go. have this because is... we have a whole collection of alcohol over yep. there, and we we try to use the bottles that we have. Mm -hmm. and we bought them for some reason. There's a lot of shots that we. I will say it's probably a good. It's not like anywhere near empty. It's probably very full. I'm trying to think very, of the last time I did a shot. <laughs> we're, we're, like, look, as you, as you. Like, uh, like at my age, it's like wheatgrass now. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, mm, lawn clippings are good. It'll flush you out. <laughs> the, the, like, it's flushing me out immediately. <laughs> the last shot that I did was spirulina. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. It's, it's, what is that? Uh, spirulina? That's... Oh, it's wonderful for your skin. Oh. No, spirulina is like a. So is seed. It's what fish eat. Oh. Why the fuck would you eat that? Great protein. Well, so, so is the fish. Yeah. No time like the present. All right. Thank All right. you so much for coming out uh, for the show, guys. To that great Texas hospitality. I'm yeah. sorry that we're doing this to you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, Bad luck, I missed oh, you. Oh, oh, eyes, there eyes, we go. Eyes, eyes, eyes. And there goes my career. Mm. <laughs> Wouldn't do it again. That's not, uh, not the worst shot we've had. Very sweet. Not the best shot we've had. Mm -mm. I haven't had breakfast. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. That <laughs> tastes like I'm in trouble. That's, uh, I think, tastes the... Like it tastes like of this old. Show. It tastes like old. Uh, like you ever, you ever go into a candy dish and it's from like when was Halloween and you have a piece of that candy. Mm. That's what that tastes. Like. See, I, I always think of candy dishes like at your grandmother's house. And it's all like the butterscotch Where candies yeah. or like the question mark candies that are like green. Is that candy or, or is that red? prescription pills that Grammy just I, decided? <laughs> to a little bit there. Either this is going to be a weird taste and a cracked tooth, or it's going to be a couple of hours of fun. <laughs> I feel like I, I, I'm getting over bronchial infection. And that's what they, they sent. They're like, you know, you're gonna drink like this. the pharmacist was like, we have a new melon flavor. <laughs> so I'm just gonna what you need to have is some melon. <laughs> it's a clear cough. He's good. I don't know where he's good. She's I feel like we should have done a drinking game on the show where every time uh, these guys do a I voice. Mean, we and just be fucked up in five yeah, minutes? Yeah, it's Friday. This is what we what do. What else are we doing after this? Nothing. <laughs> no one. We, it's true. We have business, business to do. We're gonna do business. <laughs> you know, we do have, we have a little bit of business. Do you wanna get this out of the way? Yeah. Is it okay if I keep? Sure, just go for it. Railroading, am I keeping you from anything? No. We're gonna do, no. Derail. <clears throat> derail the show all you'd like. What's going on? Um, well, we don't like to come into someone else's house empty, empty handed. <laughs> It's oh, lovely. I, I had some like ideas. This is uh, do you want to go first? Yeah. yeah um, sure. uh, tell them what's for. Okay, so we're not we're including you because you're gonna be a part of this. But <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's getting choked up. It's I'm emotional. not prepared. He's. Um, so I. You know, we've we've we get to go to these conventions and and we've had some great conversations uh, over <clears throat> over some bourbon. So we wanted to. Go ahead. Yeah. So, and, and bourbon. Yeah. It's my uh -huh. thing. Okay. It's my thing. He got uh, bourbon. That was a very Superman movie. So there. it was. There's it was nobody that I trust yeah. better. So 
We want it too. Wow. This is one of my new favorites. Wow. And it's a newborn not, it's not, baby. Not a, spo not a sponsor or anything. No. It's just it's just one of my favorites and because it's called Bib and Tucker. Oh wow. And it's a really good bourbon. That is amazing. Love the bottle, but what's in it is even better. So we just wanted to bring that. Thank you guys. guys oh, wow, thank you to, guys so much. To, I know this is this is amazing. We never have anyone bring us things. I know. Have you back on? I know. So, <laughs> Come on every week. That leads thank us you to so this. Much. Absolutely. Yeah, this is much. actually a very late yeah, well, birthday is. present. What? Oh because this is supposed to get to you. And so now I also thought it could be like a good housewarming gift. Oh, thank you so, so much. Look at that. I like this wrapping paper. It's, it's like a like a I, snake skin almost. I thought this was from us. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's from you. <laughs> uh, um, oh, I wonder what this is. Oh hmm. great, it's not a good one. So yeah, I Did you get this professionally wrapped? You have to yourself. You think I did that? You did. No. I'd be like, this is in comics. <laughs> um, oh, you're one of those people. It's it's Are hard. You beautiful wrapping okay. paper. Just, yeah, yeah, tear it up. Why? You, anyone, anyone that says I'm gonna save the, the wrapping paper. Waterford. So I figured if you have a good bourbon, um, you should have something to put it in. Yes. Oh, I love a it. Box. <laughs> a box of styrofoam. Can I have that? Oh wow. So I figured this would be good in your house, okay. and Those you are beautiful. see, and so then this goes to Trevor. There can you have go. Yeah. So that's from their again, not a sponsor. Uh, that's from their London Waterford. collection. But we'd be happy oh, if any you. bourbon or Waterford yeah. wanted to sponsor thank you. us. Okay. There you go. Yes, Just, you know, please, any bourbon. Well, not any bourbon. Not, not any bourbon. I'm not going to be, be very selective about our bourbon. Like, hi, welcome to Retro Read. Hey, it's. Jim Beam Hour. Brought to you by Old Granddad. <laughs> getting old your, Granddad. <laughs> getting your father drunk and angry for 35 years. That's wonderful. <laughs> you guys are so sweet. Mara, where's your Speaking gift? Speaking yeah, um, so. Barbara, <laughs> I brought you video game daddies. Wow. The, the and best. Um, you guys have yeah, farting couches. couches. We, we have farting couches. We did. We really? That happened once, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. Yeah. As if, as if well, your presence wasn't present enough. It is. Oh, and that's Ooh, sweet. I like, I like how you went there. Yeah. That's good. Thank you so much. But my yeah. lips are tingling. We we should write that on like requirements. <laughs> We're taking now. that burden yeah. with us. Yeah. Guests need yes. to bring gifts. If you don't bring us a gift, you're not allowed on the show. Yeah, so what did that. you get us? <laughs> hey, if we can start a trend where people and then everybody has to kind of up the ante and they're like, so we bought you a G5. Oh uh, hell yeah! And it's waiting just outside. <laughs> I love that idea. Coach to the interior, oh, oh, oh. but that's actually for you. I can't top it. <laughs> I, I don't think I can <laughs> top a G5. That, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I would just bring a G and a five and go, there you go. There you go, done. Well, you, we're, uh, just in case the audience doesn't know you guys, we're gonna ask you some questions in a little segment we call Cupidity. Cupidity. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then after that, I'd love to talk a little about Retro Replay, if that's cool with you guys. It's yeah. showy that we do. It is. It is our show, we're so, so excited. So we'll get that going in a second, but first we're gonna play some Cupidity. Okay. Love it. You guys ready to go? Yeah. All right, Nolan, let's start with you. Okay. So we do have a timer. <laughs> You don't have to worry about it, because if there's some questions I want to get to, we'll just go after the okay. timer. Okay. So but try to be efficient about it. <clears throat> okay. All right. Ready to go? Yeah. And go. <laughs> if you were going away for two weeks, how far in advance would you start packing? Oh, two hours. Outside of work and school, how inclined are you to investigate something that interests you? Two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Do trees have souls? No. They should all die and burn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you are interested in someone and discover that they were a nerd in high school, how does this affect your opinion of them? Um, oh, what a perfect time. Doesn't affect me at all. All right. Good to know. Oh, yeah. I, I, that's a weird question to me. I, someone's a nerd in high school? I guess like maybe years If someone's years a ago, nerd in high what was the, the end of it? How does that affect your opinion of them? Oh. Wouldn't affect my opinion. I, I would I, actually I, probably be more drawn to them. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think we were probably all nerds in high school. Mm, Huge. Speak for yourself. <laughs> was I cool. was the coolest kid in school. <laughs> you know that, that we talked about that but before, because well, you know I, I grew up always like play, playing sports. I was like kind of that. The jock. That group. Yeah, but I was a nerd, jock, and I don't think people realize that you can you can play sports. You can be, and it's like people are like, eh, never the two shall meet. It's like that's horseshit. It's like can't I, confirm. I, I was the same way. I mean, I I liked comic books. I liked. Uh, I mean, she did curling. She's Canadian. That's not a sport. That's an activity. Curling. No, it was with her hair. Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, we we've, we've talked about that before, and I think there's there's that there's that weird disconnect because you see the movies where 
uh, especially Revenge of the Nerds. Remember the jocks and the nerds, and they're the, eh, always fighting. And I, I just think that's that's not that's I not think true in the real world. In, in like the post MCU world, we've started to create this elitist nerd, which means if you don't tick these boxes, if you aren't a part of the the cool kids, non uncool kids crowd, like if you um, if you don't read comic books, if you don't know everything about Marvel, if you don't play video games, you don't, then you're not a nerd. And that to me is exact. It's, it's counterculture to what nerd culture is. Nerd culture is, here's my thing that I'm really, really into, maybe to an obsessive level, um, and that keeps me away from the mainstream. Now that nerd mm -hmm. culture has moved to the mainstream, it's like, well then, the jock should be the nerd. <laughs> you know? yeah. oh, you but, the meek have inherited the no, earth. <laughs> you're right. You're yeah. absolutely, yeah, I think he's right, because it, it, I've seen people at, at conventions that we go to, and it's like, well, he's not a real nerd. You know, it's almost like the, right. like the elite nerds bullying yeah. the other nerds. It's like, whoa! No, 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 no. You're, you're, uh, my nerd is like, I love classical music. Like that's yes. that's that's like my nerd. I've, I've talked to you about this. Like you have to listen to this piece from Chopin. Yeah, we used to like, share music all the time. All the time. Yeah. And like that's that's kind of my nerd. And even there are some nerds that would go. <laughs> I mean, I'm a nerd, but I'm not a nerd. Right. Um, I just don't think I don't think we should be exclusive of. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to do a revival stuff. of West Side Story on Broadway One minute with show. DC versus Marvel. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Superman, when you're Spider Man. DC. You realize Superman. you have to do that now because I know. I'm watching this. And you could probably get that funded. That's amazing. Like in five minutes. Please just kill Green Lantern like immediately. Like Act One. That's your Act, act One. one closer. This is my ring, and Act One. <laughs> and he's dead. And he's dead. Rip. You were going to say something from your menu. It's your turn you now. You don't give us shots before. We that is how the I just show want to works. tell you wow. that that was good. That's how we warm you up. Yeah, yeah, warm is exactly. Go ahead. That's how we make you sick right before you start the show. Yeah. Mm. All right, Mr. Troy Baker. Yes. You're up. Okay. All right, and go. Two hours. Do you believe morality is universal or relative? Ooh, come on! <laughs> this is going to be a Out while. of the gate? Hi, uh, Kant writes in uh, with a question for you uh, relative. Why do you dress the way you do? Because it's easier than trying to dress like not me. Suppose you have an attractive cousin, mm. and the cousin is also attracted to you. Three no. times, twice in 86, and once in Suppose 80. both of you and your cousin are adults. Yes. Would you have non-procreative sex with your cousin? <laughs> non-procreative? Like, would you question. not intentionally get them pregnant? Oh, I hate Hey, listen, question. Becky, <laughs> I want to do you. I don't want to have a baby with you. No, I wouldn't have sex with them. Maybe a hand job, but I mean, <laughs> You're not gonna like have sex with them. That's crossing the line. I want to put a baby in my cousin. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, there's there's one more question which I kind of want to post. To, to <laughs> Why didn't I get those questions? <laughs> yeah, you got those questions. Right, two yeah, hours. I'll give you one of these. Two hours. Nolan, would you fuck your cousin? Yeah, would you? Well, he's a handsome fellow. <laughs> uh, Terry? 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 I love him dearly. He's, and he's from Iowa, so I think he'd be game. Yeah. Here's a fun one for both of you to answer. Go. What? <laughs> have you ever worn a leash? And a collar in public. What? In public, in, no. In public? <laughs> in public? <laughs> Not cameras. Yes. I just love that. Bring Texas, him out, guys. Texas just lit up real quick and he leaned in. It was like, oh, Texas go is in. Thing. Sometimes <laughs> I walk myself around the uh, kitchen island. Um, uh, walk yourself. I, I don't think I've ever. <laughs> what about in private? I've never worn, no. No. At least you're a collar? Am I boring? No. No. I don't think so. Look, I think that if you. I, mean, I wear a choke. Chain, that counts. I, ah! That's that's, that's just like it's like when I do something bad in the in the audio Gee. booth or something. Punish oh, yourself. Man. Oh. Like, mm. There was a flurry of <laughs> of bad jokes that just went through my head. No, no, just leave them there. Which is why I'm not uh, continuing to sip on this because <laughs> otherwise there would this have been here is a like, Moscow. There'd been carotene jokes just oh. like coming. Yeah. Make it Both. stronger next time yeah, for no. you. Mm. Well, there's still time. We'll uh, go pick up some leeches oh and collars that, for you guys. That question has come up before. The cousin one? The cousin one. We've had it on other episodes. Yes, and it's always, so th th we pull these questions from OkCupid. This is a question that OkCupid asks people for their pro When uh, they're profiles. creating their dating profile. So they know, okay, like, hey, would you, are you okay with a date slash family reunion? <laughs> <laughs> because. So basically, if you encounter your cousin on OkCupid and you both answer right. yes to it, well, you know I, your game. I think it would be, 
I think it would be interesting, like, if you had a, a cousin that you never saw, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden, you, oh, hey, we're going to have a family reunion out here in, in, in Illinois. We're going to meet. And, every, and the families meet, and you're 16, 17 years old, and your cousin comes in in little shorts, and she's hot. And you'd be like, <laughs> uh, I literally, why does she have to be family? I've been <laughs> in this situation where, and I, love my, I have an older sister, two and a half years older than me. Um, and she's like Buddha reincarnate. She's just amazing. But I'm sitting there, and we're like at the macaroni salad or whatever, and there's just, over the course of several hours, I'm like, there's this girl, and I was like really kind of crushing on her. We're the same age, and she's super cute, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna like make a move. And my sister's sitting there next to me, she was like, you do know that we're at a family reunion. Like, <laughs> it's not like, and then other people happen to be here at the Hilton. Right. It's just, just family. our family. And I was like, this is a true story. True story. Oh. It it wow. it literally you know at, at the age of I was like 14 <laughs> years old, and at that age I'm just going like, where are the girls? Okay, okay. Boobs, boobs, boobs. Oh, that's boobs. I'm thinking about. That's my point. Mm -hmm. though. I'm like South Park. I, <laughs> 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 but I think that's that's the point. It's like there's a. As a guy, there's that point where your testosterone is just like, wah, 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 <laughs> horns coming out. So I think there's there's a part where that, that right? thought can cross your mind if if you know you've got, you got that. But I think at a then at a certain point, somewhere in, I'm guessing in your 20s, it becomes really creepy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're 27, going, hey, what's up, Caroline? I know you're still in high school, but uh, you might have noticed that Trans Am parked outside. <laughs> <laughs> you saw those T-tops. That's not mine, but those T-tops are so you don't bump your head. Yeah. One day I'm gonna. Well, it's have funny, but we've actually mind. had uh, someone write in, and I can't remember where they were from. I think it was Guam. Oh yeah. And it was like. Oh, there's a lot of cousin fucking. That, that happened to them, <laughs> and they were like, yeah. That's they said it's a very Guam. common like, occurrence there. The cousin yeah. fucking. Yep. <laughs> I can say that, right? Well, Meryl, yeah, I don't know if we have a cousin, cousin fucking question for you. Please but don't. are you ready I to go? I don't know what I would even entertain the idea with. Let's oh, do yeah. it. I'm so Fine. proud of you. Oh. I feel like I'm the only one. Like, there was like a drink roulette, and I got, I got, the, uh, I got the bullet. Everybody no. else is like, no, we're just drinking. I, just I, got, just I got the same thing. Things are about to get <laughs> sideways in about two more steps. Uh, <laughs> do it. All right, Miss Meryl, ready to go? All right. All right, and go. When taking a cab, do you like talking to the driver? Uh, depends on my mood. Would you inform law enforcement agencies about a friend committing a serious crime? <laughs> depends yeah, I on know how what you serious. Have to say about yes. that. <laughs> serious. Yeah, it's uh, like how close serious. of a friend. You're right. You Would you call? consider dating someone who acquires most of their food from garbage dumpsters? No. <laughs> do you consider yourself a truly honest person in all aspects of your life? Yes. These are bullshit Mostly. questions. <laughs> I you got the easy stacked. ones. Yeah, you stacked your question. I did not. This first did question not. was like, whoa. Yeah, it was like, was like <laughs> morality. <laughs> That's all Christian. Yeah. Christian did it. Did right you notice wow. your, que your question started with something super like intense and then like, cousin fucker? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you yeah, you kind of like, you peak when you start talking about, you know, Social ethics and, and and philosophy, and you just kind of like. I feel like that's the down. like tagline of this show. Like it starts with like, oh yeah, moral ethics, and then goes to cousin fucking. Are you yeah. very, all the time? I'm very proud that you just went and just that dumpster question. You were just like, no. Oh well, I eat <laughs> I a mean, lot of meat, and so the thought of eating meat out of a dumpster. Yeah. Really, that's where you went? It's yeah. a dumpster. <laughs> you lost me a dumpster. Like, it's if you found package. a bag of chips in a dumpster, you're like, so, hey, Mara, well, I'd like to take meat. you out it's to dinner. Meat. If it's packed um, with clothes, I'm a cheap date. Oh my gosh, no. we're going to Mastro's Somebody threw that away for a reason. Not exactly, not going to the steakhouse. We're going behind the steakhouse. Behind, behind the steakhouse. The steakhouse. <laughs> they throw out some great cuts. Mm, then I'm out. You would not believe I'm out there. Oh, yeah. This half of a lobster. <laughs> It's like Bernie. It's still in the shell. Did you slide over? I have a date tonight. There's a guy like, and go for you. Go for you. He's a very nice man. He's a very nice man. You got yourself a cat. <laughs> Drink. So is this hers? This is Drink. hers. This is what we do? Cheers. Do you want to, why don't you ask them? We've never done this before. Do you want to ask my questions? Yes. Yes. Ready? All right. 60 All right. seconds on the clock. It's actually only 20 seconds on the clock. Something like that. And go. Would you ever eat something out of the trash? Mm, yes. It is more <laughs> important to you that you are tactful or truthful? Truthful. What would be more likely to bother you in a relationship? Not enough space or not enough affection? Ooh. Oh, not enough space. I would, I would disagree with you. How often do you keep your promises? 99.9% .9 of the time. Do you have experience being in a slave <laughs> master relationship? No. Yes. Survey says? Oh, except with Mariel. Yeah. Um, yeah, these are, 
Which one of these comic book archetypes do you cl most closely identify with? Superhero, vigilante, psychic, or villain? Come on. Superhero. Let me see this. Come on. What would you say? Uh, the space or affection? Yeah. I would definitely say affection for you. Like, if you don't have enough affection, you're, yeah. you're going to be like, eh. you, you know what? Looking back on it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely correct. Um, I'm I've been, that way. I, I... These are great questions. <laughs> Sorry. Do you, you want guys, to keep this? You, you can guys keep this. talk about <laughs> this now. So send you. I'm fine. I'm just going to read. Oh. What about you? Affection or space? That's space. A great, that's space. a great question. I love yeah. space. Eating out of a dumpster. The <laughs> Listen, it you all provides space? different space. in space. I need a lot of space. So, I think it's like you need the right balance of everything, really. I mean. I think it's completely dependent on your love language. So, like, if right. your love language is. Which we have done a show about, actually, with Tim Geddes and Nick Scarpino. Yep. I'm kind of funny. I would love, I need to go back and watch that. Yeah, we talked I, about love languages. I would, I mean, let me take a guess. Uh, Tim is either verbal or acts of service. I think his was physical touch and Quality? words of affirmation. Yeah, I can't remember, gosh, it's been a while. I didn't know words of affirmation words. Mine was acts of service and I think words of affirmation were like my top two. That surprises me. Yeah. I would think that like physical, I'm a physical guy. Like mm -hmm. I, I if if I just I'm the, I'm the kind of guy that he's very like, touchy. Very touchy. A little too Are you touchy. speaking from um, experience? Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have a slave master relationship? I'm a slave to my dogs. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Mood. Because they 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 don't read. They can't do math. Mm -hmm. Fucking idiots. <laughs> Shit outside. It's gross. Yeah. Right. You're talking about your dogs, not. Ah, I'm sorry. My kids. Yes. My kids. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> I, 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 can I can I do something? Absolutely. Can I hijack this? this a hundred percent. This is your show now. So we have some questions that we didn't get to. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to just throw them up. Post them. I think, Let's because do these it. are some really cool questions. I yeah. love this. Uh, how often do you use profane language? Too often. Every Too other often. word. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> assuming a given situation is truly hopeless, it is is it better to accept hopelessness or maintain hope? What? Uh, maintain hope. Assuming a given situation, su assuming a given situation is truly hopeless. <laughs> so if it's hopeless, is it? Is, is it, it better to maintain that hope or just give in to the hopelessness? Right? Is that yeah. the question? Uh, hmm. I don't think it's ever great to give in to hopelessness because I, I, I would. I, I think know. it's a mischaracterization. That, that's not an opposite. Maintaining hope uh, can be equally as unrealistic, and and that that's. If someone, perfect example, so Pam's uh, grandfather, three weeks from like, hey, I think I've got a pain in my stomach. She's at the funeral yesterday. Wow. So, which is a 91 years old, you've left an incredible life, Absolutely. incredible family. My son is part of his legacy, it's incredible. But to go, they, they, they reach the point where like, well, we could do surgery, we could do treatment, everything is like, man, that's really not going to, what are you gonna get up there? It's like, well, right. you get like another two months. Which at that point? At that point, it's kind of like, or and be really, really sick. So is that yeah. giving into hopelessness, mm. or is that going, no. Accepting. Accepting and saying, I refuse. They were talking about the funeral and they're making all these arrangements. And I was like, Th those are two hours in 91 years. I would be damned if I would let my life be underscored and surmised by two hours Depending upon, do, you, do we have the potato salad, or, or, or do we do like a tabbouleh? Uh, what, what should we do there? Mm -hmm. I've lived this X amount of years. Don't let this be. That's why I'm like, burn me and and move on. Yeah. I, I don't. I know that the the funerals for the living, not for the dead. But uh, I, I don't. I don't think it's a. I think this is a wrong way to phrase that question. Yeah. Given to I didn't write it. <laughs> we'll call. We'll call up wrong, Okay sir. Cupid. <laughs> yeah. We'll let them know. Tell them to. The, right. This question's fucked. I, I just want to hear this. This one last one. Which oh. of the following could you most easily live without for an entire month? Oh, this one's hard. Toothbrush and toothpaste, mm. phone, internet, or porn? Porn. The hardest to live without? Oh. Hardest, no, yeah, which, which could you easily live oh, without? Oh, easily live without. Probably porn. Uh, porn for me. Yeah, absolutely. Porn. For, I, of I those need, things? I need to brush. Thing. Let's take yeah, porn. I need my phone. I need my, my phone. My phone has the internet, and man, I got to brush my teeth. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like couple. It's just like you get that little the fuzz. I, don't, I honestly mm. probably would choose toothbrush and toothpaste to live without if porn wasn't on the menu there. You would say because no toothbrush. Brush for your a teeth, month? you nasty Because bitch. phone and internet for a month, like that is my life. That is my job. That is okay. My... That I feel. Have you? What was the longest time you ever went without like a phone? Uh, a week. 
when? We did a documentary about it, me and uh, Blaine Gibson, who you guys met before. Yeah. Um, we did a documentary about we lost technology for a week and had to go back to 1989 technology. So we had like pagers. Jesus, 1989. And we had I like. Was, I was an adult <laughs> at that point. That's what we I had to go born. back to 1989. It was the Stone Age. I was 19. Yeah. No, I had lost my virginity. <laughs> I had been inside another yeah. person. I had Tim. drank alcohol. I had smoked. Illegally. It lived. Le of course, illegally. I used to drive Unless to Canada, you're in Canada to get drunk. 89, 13. I was uh, watching the fall of communism. Is that what you were doing? <laughs> That's what you were doing. I'm just watching the fall Some of Some of us politics. weren't born yet. <laughs> Oh, way, really? You were making in music. 1899. 1899. <laughs> in 1989. Lizzie no, Borden. Not even a thought. And, and herself. Yeah. 19. What? I wasn't even a thought. I had so just been born. The old man at the table could. Uh, the only thing on there: phone, internet, porn. Keep it. I need my toothbrush and my toothpaste. Yeah. All right, yeah. fair enough. Those are great questions. No, because I it's just when I don't want to be so tied to that. Well, you know what else? It's another yeah. 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. When yeah. do we start recording? Yeah. We'll oh, we we'll haven't started yet. We'll We're just warming up. Oh, good. Let me just get these. Well, uh, <laughs> before we continue on, <laughs> yes. I want to talk a little bit about, about your show before we move on. Do but I would like to say thank you to Rothy's. Do this episode do of Always Open is brought to you by Rothy's. Do Are you ready to try the most comfortable flats you've ever worn that you could wear all day, every day for any occasion? Rothy's is the everyday flat for life on the go. It's stylish, classic, comfortable, and comes in four fashionable styles. We got the flat, the point, the loafer, and the sneaker for women and girls. <laughs> Color and pattern selection is amazing, and, they're, uh, and they have an amazing lineup. They launch new colors every few weeks and sell out constantly. I love their sneakers. I got the white ones, and they have like a little blue and black bar on the back that makes them look super really cool. So comfortable. Um, you absolutely have to check these shoes out. Uh, right now, Rothy's has an amazing deal for our viewers. Use the code OPEN to get free shipping with no minimum. Uh, that's free shipping and free returns slash exchanges on your Rothy's shoes. And trust me, you won't wa want to return them. So go to rothys.com and enter the code OPEN to get your new favorite flats and free shipping. It's a no-brainer. Shoes that are comfortable and stylish and sustainable. And free shipping. So go get your pair today at rothys.com with the promo code OPEN. Get this deal while it lasts. Rothys. <laughs> I need you guys styles. on every episode. We, yeah, you're going to have to come back every episode do to do that. Yeah, that was beautiful. I, I prefer the pointed toes. Do you? You do. Yeah. They're very yeah. comfortable. You would, you would Roach killers? Made out of water bottles. Water bottles. No way. These shoes. Absolutely. Really? Very cool. That's very cool. Sustainable. Very yep. sustainable. So before we move on to our, our segments, tell me a little about Retro Replay. What is that? What is Retro Replay? How is Retro When? <laughs> Who? Is Who? Is why? Yes, yes. I question. mean, why is Yes, question. I remember. I remember coming up with the idea of Retro Replay. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, so Troy and I wanted to, to drink to. Holy to so you yeah. really yeah. should not give us alcohol this early. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, my God. You notice that, like, I've been. Woo. I'll look at it and I'll go, that's. that's mm. So, Retro <laughs> Replay, level two, only on YouTube. Tell us about We. Yes. So we started, we wanted to do something that, what is wrong with you? I bring more drinks. Oh, oh. oh. what a great oh. moment. Oh, oh wow. Oh. That's for you. Thank you. Feed me, Seymour. Uh, I couldn't tell if yours, <laughs> I, couldn't, well, I couldn't tell if yours was empty or not. It's Because you're, 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 you're big hands there. That's actually tonic, that's for her, but I was gonna oh, be yours. Enjoy that. <laughs> Do one of the, I'll just suck on ice for five minutes. Do one of those. <laughs> well, but, but what else are you serving now, up, Texas? You know, uh, these, these right here were just given to me. And, oh, and, and, that and, and is with, weird. With this, so uncomfortable. With this lovely these little Sharpie. These are two incredible you games know? that I've been in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Only I thought it'd be you. perfect. You were talking about your show. Just so you. Yeah. There you go. These, are, um, these were two incredibly memorable, award-winning Games. Uh, What's a collection? One, two, three. I wasn't. I was in the the good one of these. Um, <laughs> you oh, did man. something. I think a little bit. Mm. Be kind. Are those yours, Mario? They are. So those are two of my favorite absolute games. I'm assuming uh, that I'm going to sign this. No, I, I want you to have them. I figured you yeah. guys probably didn't have any copies, <laughs> so I wanted you to have my copies that I've played before. Um, so maybe you can play them in your game. It smells like your success. Does it? <laughs> smells it smell like, like completion? Mm. <laughs> it smells like me. It doesn't smell no. quite like a platinum, but it smells like a gold. I like but yeah. Um, yeah, I, we, we I love you guys, honored. so it'd, just, it'd be an honor to. We gotta do it. 
Oh, oh my gosh, you're going all out. Oh, you got to you got you to take the, the. Well, if you sign the plastic, you can just put it on anything. That's true. Very true. That's true. I could. On a porn DVD? I could. We like. If you sign the plastic, you can put it on anything. Exactly. Well, thank you guys for doing that. Sounds like bad teams uh, for Fear's lyrics. <laughs> Tell us about Retro Replay. He and I, um, we started. Uh, go. All right, you go. Then, then. He's going to get yes. that too. Yes. Yeah, we'll do it. It's good. There you go. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, I should Oh, no, shouldn't. I'm okay. You're, you're I really, I should I'll double fist. But I will. <laughs> um, yeah, no, Retro Replay came about. Um, we. You know, we, we've always kind of laughed at the idea that people have always uh, almost pitted us against each other because we, as we were uh, coming up, uh, doing our work, and uh, it's funny, oh, no, I'm, I love Troy Baker. It's like, I love Nolan North. And, yeah, and they, people, and we'd be sitting there having drinks, just kind of going, all right, whatever, we're, we're working, it's, it's great. Yeah. Um, I and, think and, you know, there was always this, this, this there was never that kind of, Combativeness between us. There's never that. You know, we're, we're both working. We're both taking care of our, our families, our lives, and absolutely, and, and, and it's been great. So, um, I, I was gonna say, yeah, you guys this believe up. it. The I got, it. I got it. I know how to. <laughs> do Nolan it. and I have been friends for too long. Too long. Too long. You ready to end the friendship? But today, it was really today. It's gonna today you did it live it. on the show. We actually got Maury here. The uh, <laughs> bring him out. <clears throat> When we started doing press for Uncharted 4, and, and we really started, like, he and I worked together a lot of times on Uncharted. But well, we worked uh, together on a bunch of things a bunch before of stuff. that, but that was the Uncharted first was time. like, and then, and then all of a sudden it was, when we're doing the press tour, and you're on the road with someone um, for a while, you're like, you better be a good hang. And it was like, oh. I got that term from you, a good hang. Yeah. I've never heard anyone use that before. It's like, you're a good hang. Yeah, what good is, hang. Hang. dictionary definition, good hang, what is it? No this one. right now, this is a good hand. This, this is, is a good. good <clears throat> Everybody a here, hand. it's just where you, I mean, it, there's cameras rolling, but we uh, people should know what? that nothing would change, right? Absolutely. If, if the, there was no cameras and we we're somewhere, we need to rename the show. Place. A good hang. It's a good hang. So we decided uh, another too late. double entendre. It's too late. <laughs> too late. We have, we've, we've got the trademark. <laughs> on this. I am. <clears throat> That's so our, our. We decided mission. like if we're gonna do anything, it should it should look the exact. Same way as if there were cameras or no cameras. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've got two great producing partners, PJ Harsman and Drew Lewis, who work their asses off on this show. Yeah. And we just started. Uh, I started. I got a retro pie, and I started playing old vintage games. And I like went back and completed a game that I started in like 1989, as a matter of fact. And when I was just emerging from the womb. When I was drunk. <laughs> when you were laid. covered. <laughs> You were covered in afterbirth. I was like a chrysalis. Covered in afterbirth. So we started doing it, and then all of a sudden, he's like, I've never played games before, and there's so many games that, well, when I was growing up, I, I didn't play those games before. Y you'd play, yeah, I played years before. He plays a lot of mind games. Yes, mm -hmm. this is true. So we were like, what if we just sat down and started <laughs> playing through games? And we did, and we started off, we did Spider-Man, and we put and it up on the internet. Well. We're like, we think we have a show. And just from that, it, I think we've done 36, four, maybe 40 episodes, something like that. And the evolution of how it's grown, especially because of like our community. Absolutely. Like the the you, yeah, you guys know this more yeah. better than anybody. Um, the terms that we've come up with, and and what you never thought would be a thing like soup is is a huge thing. Where did the um, what what's going happen? <laughs> Is that the <coughs> favorite? Go. Okay. <laughs> so they have yeah. a, they have like a slogan mm -hmm. or like a saying on the show, and it's what? What? We, we ended up starting. Uh, it's this is what I think the beauty of anything. It really and we talked about this. It, 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 I think the people are and, and uh, people are savvy enough to know when something's manufactured. Absolutely. When something you're making it up, and it was it, the what's going happen is how we start every show now. Uh, and you, I'll get to his credit, he he was the one who said, you know, slogans and things like that and T-shirts, that's going to be generated by our community, yeah. not by us. We can't tell people them. People are going to pick up on those things. Yeah, we don't want to force feed, like, you like know. Like the fuck you, Lizzie. Yeah, that's fuck you, Lizzie. Our, exactly. <laughs> Someone made that for us. Love it. Yeah, Slogan so one day I'm playing something and he's like, what are you doing? And I was, <laughs> the thing about games is like, and you have to understand, we, we'll shoot. Everything you see on our show is completely genuine. 
it, it's like the frustration no because prep. because you know, <laughs> there, really there's, there, there's seriously no prep. and 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 we do we rely on our our our, our you know just our, our um, comedic skills improv skills there you go thanks <laughs> chemistry thank you no we have none of that mm -hmm. now we have none of that <laughs> we, we what do we rely on <laughs> there's our communication uh, no we have this we have this unspoken language we just kind of you kind of you, you work with someone long enough you know someone long enough you have sort of this this camaraderie this this great kind of flow to your conversation and i was losing my mind on this one game and i i, I and i just i was between what is going on and what is happening and i just went what is going happen <laughs> And, and he just went, uh, <laughs> what? And what is going And he started happen? laughing about it. it. I didn't say it on purpose. Sure. And then our community just picked up on that. What is going to happen? And then they had to remind me. I said, as I remember, so what is going to happen just became this thing uh, through the community that because I had, they like when, a matter of fact, I saw uh, yesterday, we, had, we always do a live chat every yeah. Thursday with our fans. Yeah. And we, we got on there and somebody said, Nolan's getting too good at some of these games. I like <laughs> to see him more frustrated. Yeah. And I'm like, well, hey, I, the goal is for me to get better. And he's sitting there. I know he's thinking, we got to get into some more difficult yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to start breaking into a little bit. We've, we've got, you know, we, level one was, you know, we did a lot of NES titles. Yeah. We did, yeah. we played a lot of the hits. A uh, lot of obscure thing, balloon fight. I never. I was like, I don't remember playing this. And you and I was good at you that. Were, you were good at that. And I get this pride. Of, I'm actually good at that. Dragon Slayer. Oh, I'm proud of you. We did our. our I love y'all's Valentine's Day episode. Our Valentine's Day episode was was Dragon Slayer. It was the first episode of of level two or season two, and this is a game that I played like growing up at the arcade. I dumped. Yeah. It was one of the most expensive yeah. games. It was Fifty cents it wasn't a quarter, and I dumped. Like my, I would get five dollars. Big I was spender like, over here. It was like this is what you have for the entire night, and there have been many nights where like thirty minutes later I came back and I'm like, well, I'm just gonna play with the carpet now because <laughs> I have nothing else to do. Is that a euphemism? Yeah, <laughs> I knew it was, it was like, for me. I was waiting for it. It was like I wanted to like leave the little donut for us right. like, and joke and, and, and mm -hmm. carry That's on. True. That's what happens when you guys have spent play so much time Play with the carpet. Together. Yeah. So that's kind of what this. Uh, what the show has become. Awesome. Well, where could people find it and find you guys? I have no idea. It's on YouTube. On YouTube. Uh, go to YouTube forward slash Retro Replay Show. You can go at yep. retro, retro Replay Show on Instagram and Twitter. Awesome. Yep. Um, and we're always tweeting about it or posting different stuff about it, so you can follow us on our little socials. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we look forward to more of that. Yeah, man, we do too. Um, all right, so let's move on to our first segment of the show. <laughs> That's all the time we have. Cupidity wasn't the first? Well, that was like an yeah. icebreaker. Yeah, it's an Getting icebreaker. to know you guys a little better, even though we know all I thought this was the icebreaker, because literally all the ice is broken. Oh, it's mm. so broken. And it's also in my glass Troy. from Nolan. It's Troy, right? It's pleasure. Thank you so much. No, no, I know. I a couple times. I know, but I just, I, so every now and then, I think it's Trent. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's Troy. Uh, all right, so the first segment is a question from Whitney H. And Whitney wants to know, how would you describe your 20s in three words? <laughs> oh, Three separate <laughs> words or like ah. a phrase? Oh, up to you. Um, please post bond. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Oh, I was hoping <laughs> there would be a story out of that one. It's multiple stories. Oh. Mm. Not, Ours would be I'm, I'm, still in it. Yeah, <laughs> still happening now. I got well, four more uh, months, three more months. Mm. <laughs> That's great. Are you digging? <laughs> like, what do you want to do? <clears throat> no, I, I. Gosh, you know something? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shock you. I'm gonna go yeah. a little serious about go. it. I'm gonna Let's say boy it. to man. Oh, oh no. yeah. That's a I, good I, one. I was uh, when I turned 20. I was uh, in North Carolina. Baseball was the only thing I was gonna do. Uh, it's what I want to do. And I went getting hurt going to uh, graduate school, becoming a reporter, then hating that, bad relationships, uh, relationship especially, uh, That's to, it. to, um, to literally uh, uh, quitting all that, every, uh, quitting all the stuff that everybody expected me to do and following my, my heart oh, yeah. to ended up in New York and then California. I mean, New York's doing stand up for chicken fingers and a beer. Seriously, I mean that, and I was like, yes. That club. I would rather have the chicken fingers and the beer than like the, the 25 bucks they'd give you because it was more expensive. Doing that, to end up getting uh, to California, 
onto a television show, and by the time I was 29, I was a father. I was married and, and a father. So it's like those 20s were just a- Jeez, you did a lot in a decade. It was yeah. a defining, yeah. You became I mean, a father in your 20s? I was 29, yeah. Wow. I was 29. I can't, yeah. I can't imagine. I'm that's 29 you. right now. Yeah, I cannot you. imagine. But the funny thing about it is, you know, I have, I have this great 19-year-old and this yeah. great 15-year-old turning 16, and, and I'm still young enough to be like, Let's go. You know, I, yeah. I, you know. You always will. He be. won't be, but he'll just be like, you know, traveler be like, come on, Dad, we're gonna do shots. Hey, hey, <laughs> I'm gonna do a shot as well in my hip. <laughs> Travelers, how old? A year? Ten months. Ten wow. Months. Ten months, man. I remember baby, when baby. you fucking told me On that plane. that your wife was pregnant or yeah. you were about to have a baby. You were so mad. I was like, there just wasn't the point in the conversation. It was like, like you were like a month out. No, 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 no. No, we were, I think we were like six months. Yeah, because it was January. Because yeah. we, were, we were flying back from Austin. Yeah. Um, where were you going? I, I was going you, to Australia. You were going to Australia? Yeah. Um, and so we had just started telling people, and yeah, you were like genuinely in the picture, like, yeah, I thought we were friends. Yeah. Like, We've just started telling <laughs> oh, people. Oh, yeah. It, and I wanted to, I wanted to wait, and we're sitting there, <laughs> we're sitting there next to each other on the flight. And I was like, right, so <laughs> we're pregnant. I was like, what the fuck, yeah, man? Yeah, so pissed. It, I, I will defend you, though, please. Because as a, as, as a parent of older kids, that's a big thing. You don't, you, you, it's the hardest thing. You want to tell your friends, yeah. and you can't. You know, yeah. there's, just, there's just so much that you have to, can, that can go wrong right. in a pregnancy. There's so, and then you look. I think, <clears> I mean, at any point in time, right? <clears throat> right. I, at, I, at any I, point, yeah. I feel like. For me, it's it was such a, uh, and I still struggle with this because it's such a, it's such a good thing. And 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 if you have any inclination, it's like skydiving. If you have any inclination to do it, by all means, do it. But if you don't, don't. It's it's not like you have to do this to understand. We've life. talked about it at length at on length. this show about, about this, parenting, about parenting and being a, like having kids and I, know, the pressure to have kids and people who get kind of shit on for not wanting kids and like. The whole debate between the hey, two. Hey, if, if I, it's, it's, I'm sorry, I was no, gonna go say, the, uh, it, it's like, you can go too far on either, like on a religious spectrum, you can go either in polarity. There's something that I love about just being open to everything and going, you know what, maybe. Yeah. Um, and the first, like, big conversation that I had with my wife, I sat her down, we were in a, <laughs> we're in a hotel room, and I was like, look, you need to understand, this is never leading to marriage, and there's absolutely no way I'm gonna have kids. Um, I had been married before, and that was an 18-month disaster. Wow. Um, because I wasn't ready for it, and I got into it for all the wrong reasons. Um, I just, I, f I feel like, going back to the original point, I, it's such a good thing. Um, and I understand people are like, I literally counted when he fir was first born, within minutes, I counted his fingers and toes. And I understand it now because it was like, please let everything that's bad within me stay within me and only the good be passed on. And he's already at 10 months and I, th we have the coolest relationship. Um, he's also because the of this, cutest. He's the cutest kid. <laughs> kid and I'm, in I'm, the I'm a little biased, but at the same time, he, you know, his boys, his babies are becoming men now and they're becoming good men. Like, yeah. Cooper, you want to talk about a good hang? Cooper is a Cooper's great awesome. hang. Yeah. Jared is wise coming beyond to his, his years. own. <laughs> huh? wise, wise, well wise beyond his years. Wise beyond his years. Yeah. So now I'm going into surprising. this thing, and I'm watching as yesterday, uh, my wife sent me a clip of Traveler just wants to start walking, and I'm like, you better wait 24 hours. <laughs> Miss your first steps. So now I'm. He's at you know, starting a career and um, being looked at all over the country by, by top scouts for football, for kicking. Wow. And I'm, I'm going into first that. steps, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So the disparity between those two. But my 20s. You got, you got three <laughs> words for us for your 20s? Um, ruled by streets. Oh, isn't that sexier than mine? Yeah. I was, we were just talking about this last <laughs> night. <laughs> My entire, like, my, my 20s were entirely ruled, uh, anybody watching in Dallas will understand this, Elm, Maine, and Commerce. Those three streets that bisect Deep Elm and, mm -hmm. and, and make up that little block, if you're in the music scene, that is your kingdom. 
Yeah. And, and you are ruled by the powers that be, and all you want is to make sure that you get, you know, either that direct support for that national act that's coming through, you get your first headlining slot, and when you got your um, first plaque at the Curtain Club, um, or when you were, you know, um, the headliner at Trees, you know, these were, these were big things, and, and I look back and I was like, it was so petty. But it wasn't. It was also foundational to, to who I am as a person, and I've, I, I feel I can't help but attribute a lot of the drive that I have now as an artist and as a businessman and as a father and everything else, as a man, to really having to make it on the streets. Um, when all you're doing is, like you said, the stand-up for 25 bucks, you know, or chicken fingers and beer, playing for the same thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, or like you, you struck it big because the camel you know, representative was there, and you got a you know a couple packs of smokes. So, um, I feel like we don't have those outlets as much anymore. Um, you don't have to, if you're an artist. David Mills says the exigencies of the artist situation are always with the financial. Mm -hmm. Trying to find ways to there's something there's a beautiful um, art that's created out of the struggling. Mm -hmm. um, the Sistine Chapel was done with him struggling, him sitting you know, on his back from one the of the most beautiful years. places see, in the Yeah, world. but see, go. I, that's lazy. <laughs> <laughs> He's lying down. Uh, He's like, go. how can I paint lying down? Oh, I got it. I'll do ceilings. <laughs> I've if met you will contractors me. like that. It's horseshit. I think I've told you this story. If you will indulge me, one quick story. Um, and I'm going to mess up the name, but when <clears throat> he was asked to do that, uh, he was not known as a painter. Um, he was known as a sculptor. Uh, and the Pope asked, would you please, we want you to do a painting in the Vatican. He goes, of course, of course you want me, I'm the master, you want me to, well, you want me to do one of the murals and the wall. He was like, no, 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 no. Um, you see the ceiling? And it was literally what you would ask, like, a... House painter. House painter to do. And he was so offended. And he was like, absolutely not, That's, that, you know, task is beneath me. He's like, totally fine, I completely understand. Um, we, we've got someone else that we're going to do. Matter of fact, he's a young kid. If you look just through that hall, you can see he's doing this wall painting, and it was um, it was like Rembrandt, or so it was I, I can't remember the exact artist, but it was someone else who's young. And he's like, well, I mean, if he's doing that, and then he went and he told the young artist, he was like, just wanted to let you know, I know you're a fan, but the master is actually going to be doing the ceiling. If you if you look just through that crack, because you can see from the Sistine Chapel, you can see that. So they, they played them off each other? Played them off each other, and he was like, oh my oh. gosh. So he made two artists greater by pitting them against each other. And Michelangelo, when he's painting the ceiling, he worked for like six months on this one piece, and he finally climbed down the scaffold, and he looks up and he goes, fuck, because he had made it this big, because he was used to painting on this canvas. And so the next thing he painted was a big finger touching a big, <laughs> so that's where we get that iconic shot. Gotcha. That kind of art that is so impactful a lot of times only comes from your perspective of your own failure. And we need that sometimes to climb down from the scaffolding of our own artist, you know, artistic situation to be able to go, oh, I, that wasn't what I thought it All right, could now, be. How do we bring it from this to cousin? Yeah, let's go yeah. back to cousin. Okay. <laughs> well, That's the beautiful. first, a lot of people don't know, the first thing he drew were two cousins. Two cousins. Okay. Two cousins fucking. That's actually, ceiling. you heard it here first. And then yeah. they said, uh, people Bernadetto and Pietro. <laughs> the Pope was like, is that me? He's like, I'll fix it. It's you and your cousin. Pope. That's your face. Yeah. Well, those are good words. That's great. Very accurate. I feel like I want you to go to another ad read. So <laughs> She's about to. <laughs> right I, now. Yeah. I, well, let me tell you about HelloFresh. Yes. Please tell us. Would you like to give me a little, little beat? Yeah. I want a little jingle. Eight this percent. episode of Always Open is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh makes conquering the kitchen a reality with deliciously simple recipes. They do all the meal planning, shopping, and prepping so you can focus on a healthier and happier you. Fresh, pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow six-step pictures recipe cards are delivered to your door each week in a special insulated box. 
<laughs> spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping so you could get that time back to do more of what you love. Uh, I made the meatloaf recently, which was delicious. Me and Trevor enjoyed it very much, and it, it was ready in like 30 minutes. So convenient. Chef's kiss. All meals come together in 30 minutes max. Call for less than two pots or pans and require minimal cleanup. Choose from classic veggie or family plan with the option to switch between for when your tastes change. Get out of the recipe rut and start cooking outside of your comfort zone by discovering new delicious recipes for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash always 80, that's eight zero, and enter the code always 80. That's hellofresh.com slash always 80 and code always 80 for $80 off your first month. Thank you, HelloFresh. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. I always think that I get that, you know, I'm, I'm gonna land it, yeah. like hitting the post. And then there's well, one. See, I'm watching her read. So. Oh, oh, he's, okay. he's cheating a little I'm bit. I'm clocking the, yeah. He's got a step above. All right, for uh, <laughs> this next question, this I am, very curious to hear all y'all's response to this. Okay. This is from Sarah J. And Sarah wants to know, what is your proudest accomplishment? Go. Oh. Go. These. <laughs> uh, gosh. Same answer. Oh, man. Putting on the spot. I usually try and wait it out until everyone else says it so I can... You're, you're breaking the seal for us all. Gather. Um... This show is one of them, this for sure. This show is definitely up there. Um, my parents opened a coffee shop in a rural part of Texas that's doing pretty decently. Yeah. Uh, and she's Plainview, been an Texas. integral Plainview. part of it. You know Plainview? Girl, I'm from Dallas. Plainview is in the yeah, middle of nowhere. Yeah, Plainview is in the middle of it. You know what they call it Plainview? <laughs> so you can see. It's pretty plain. It's pretty plain. There's not much going on over yeah, there. Pretty plain. That's been pretty plain. That's been like uh, kind of trials and tribulations there. That's been pretty fun and, and feel good about it. Cool. You know? Little coffee shop, like little. little coffee shop, yeah. What's their What's their vibe? Is it like? Um, it's a little farmhousey. Cool. Yeah. It's like great because it. Meryl has like access to the cameras that oh, are in yeah. there. Oh so yeah, all the time. Every now and then in. she'll just be like checking in on them. Nice. Doing a little spy work. <laughs> Do you work. realize how dangerous that is? Because like if you just cut. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like late at night. Like, like, oh my dad! <laughs> oh god! In the Ethiopian <laughs> brew. <laughs> well, honey, the, the, there weren't no customers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But Not yeah, it. it's definitely one of them. Yeah, I think this show is definitely up there for me yes. personally. Um, and just like everything that we've gotten to do within Rooster Teeth, like I've been here for seven years. And to go from just like starting off as community manager and not really being like a face of the company to now being involved in so many different productions and finally getting to direct, direct and write and do like a whole bunch of other things that I never thought I'd ever do or that I wanted to do even. Yeah. Um, I think is already a very cool step to take before even hitting 30. Yeah. I'm oh proud of myself. God, man. Look at you God. go. Look these, at you These grow. guys are always talking to me about just wait till you're in your 30s. Dude, I'm so, so excited. 30s are gonna you're be great. You're almost there. You're I'm almost so there. excited for you. Yeah. Like for me. I, it, and by the way, this is not in any way disparage the 20s. It's a wonderful question. Like, um, your 30s are just gonna be, it, it's like you are you spend 10 years with people going, and here's this tool, and here's this tool, and you don't know what this is, but just wait. And then when you hit 30, you're like, oh, got it. That's where they come into play. Yeah. Th that's true if you weren't somebody like me who figured out <laughs> my life in my 20s and then my 30s. Like, I feel like uh, I'm a little envious because there's people like you uh, that is, you know, and, and if you're a coffee shop, like you in your 20s, you guys have like, I feel like your 20s were my 30s. So when I hit 40, I was like, let's go. Let's go. Um, and that's where things have really uh, been great. I mean, 30s were great too, but the 40s were just, for me, because my 20s were just sort of like a, ju a juggling, juggling act. Figuring it out. was and a juggling act. 30s is when you really came into your own. 30s is where I started to figure things out, and then the 40s is where it's like, now we're, we, we, got the, we got the crews going up. At the, at, a, at the at a good speed and absolutely and uh, it, but it doesn't mean you you, you let off but yeah. you know you 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 keep going but uh, more. that's where you you rev it a little more. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Proudest accomplishment. <clears throat> I knew this question was going to be a doozy for you guys. It's a yeah. doozy. You've been it, it's, all over. You know what's weird is I automatically punt to Traveler. Yeah. But then Your I, son. I don't feel like he's an accomplishment. Like yeah, I, I mean, he's, he's a baby. What has he done? <laughs> 
<laughs> Save yourself. That's like, great. you know what I mean? Like, Does he pay the bills yet? <laughs> I can't take credit it's a for him. It's a joint accomplishment, too. But I don't even, right. I, like... I mean, you could take, like, I didn't, 50%. He, you don't understand, man. He's his own being. Like, there's... I... But, I mean, so much of who a person becomes is because of their parents. And, and the, the kind of person that I, is. I That's want that to be that. true, and I also refuse for it to be true. Mm. Because um, I think there's a lot of us, myself included, who spend a majority of your life either being under the thumb of... There's, there's stuff that I'm impacting. It's taken me a long time to bring myself to the point where I can honestly say my parents were doing the best they could. Mm. Um, and that's, I feel like if you've struggled with um, how you were raised or your relationship with your parents, if it's, if it's rough, if you can bring yourself to a place where you can honestly say that and not just like, I know they were doing the best they could, but you're like, you were doing the best you could. Mm -hmm. And still be okay with saying your best wasn't good enough. Like there was a disparity between parenting and love that I, I, that I should have probably received. I'm okay. I don't need you to make recompense for that, nor do I need you to apologize. But I refuse to, I, I think that we can swing from extremes and go, well, my dad did this, so I'm not gonna do that. We're like, you're still being ruled by that. You mm -hmm. need to be your own parent, you need to be your own person, be your sure. own man, be your own woman. But I, I don't want, and I'm already seeing it, I'm like, I don't want Traveler to be a carbon copy of me. I want him to be better than me. I want him to be, and I think. It's a pretty low bar. Pretty low. <laughs> sorry, you'd, have to be a, sorry. you'd have to be a really like good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. I know exactly what you did. You were limboing. It's a, a lim yeah. it's a, you gotta be a really good limbo dancer. <laughs> yeah. to be. That's a low uh, bar. So I don't know. I I I want. I I, I don't want us to always be like. I'm like, well, my parents did this, and so I do this. Mm -hmm. And that's not just like yelling or drinking or, or the, all the bad stuff. But it's even, I, there's so much that I look back and go, we were, m my generation was raised in, in a certain manner to uh, not look at women as authority figures. Because, um, by our moms. Oh, yeah. Because our moms would say, if, we, if I got in trouble, my mom would say, wait until your father comes yeah. home. Mm. And the reality is... Now it's like, wait until your mother comes home. <laughs> yeah, it's my, mo my mother is an authority figure. I rely on her for information, I rely on my father for information. And for mothers who, there is no greater power on the planet than a woman that's in labor. It's like, you've done... Pam was in labor for 60 hours, oh no drugs, oh, at all. Jeez, what a hero. Should've taken the drugs, should've <laughs> taken the drugs. And I'm like, what are you, oh, I'm afraid of this flight. What? For, for 40 hours, I didn't talk to you because you were on a different plane. And she looks back, she was like, it was awesome. Like, she loved it. What did my, how did my father compete with that? It's like, well, I <laughs> stood outside and I smoked cigarettes and, you know. Well, I gave her a one thrust nine months ago. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wait till a one thrust. <laughs> one that's thrust. great. You're pregnant. Oh, God. <laughs> you, it, it, yeah. But that's, that's the authority figure. It's like, I, I feel like right now we're experiencing a lot of the problems that we do is because those dual parental roles need to be reclaimed. Sure. And it's like, no, not wait till your father comes home. Yeah, but, you know, the thing is, though, it, that I, you know, I've done a lot of self-reflection on parenting and mm -hmm. my upbringing and all that stuff, and it, we're the sum of all our experiences, right? Sure. And so when you say, "Oh, he's gonna," you know, how much your parents influence you? It's actually your parents' actions, yeah. and it's it's your, those things, you know, how you a person's raised. It's not like who my father was, who my mother was that changed me. It's it's their actions did. and what they did impacted my life, my brother's life. Observing so it's so it's those things. So it's so, so in truth is, it, it, as a parent, I've tried to and you know and I'm always trying to get better. Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to improve. And and if you if you really think it sounds selfish at first, but if you think about improving yourself mm. and getting your own finding your own comfort level with yourself, that feeds into how you treat people, right. including your 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 spouse, your 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 children, and 
we all learn from watching others. Right. You know, we learn, people say, how do you do Christopher Walken? I heard him talk a bunch of times and I just started doing it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, so it, it's not like he had a personal effect on my life. It's just, I, we're, we're, we're monkeys. We're, we learn and we, we ape things. Can't confirm. Yeah. And yeah. you either uh, ape bad behavior that someone who either raised you or influenced you, it could be a kid at school, a teacher, your parent, whatever, or you, or you don't. Yeah. But that's, and, and that's, and the thing I like about it is, and I realized is, I control that. And that's something I can, I need to take ownership of. And I can take, um, and, and if I can take ownership of watching bad something, somebody do something bad, and, and then not do it, that gives me a, a personal a self-confidence, which then feeds into treating my kids better, treating my wife better, just treating friends better, being a better listener, mm. you know, and just, just She's still doing needs things. To work on a little bit. He's doing great. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing so much better in the last 48 <laughs> hours. You said something I want to key in on. Um, we are monkeys. I was talking this last summer, I got to do this really cool thing uh, with a buddy of mine, Austin Winter. He's a brilliant composer, and he and his partner, business partner, Tony Lund, did a uh, musical called The Light in the Void. And it was like a uh, three act play with an uh, 80 piece orchestra wow. and a TED talk. Wow. by three of the top scientists in the field that all happened to be women. And the show, it was a one night thing with the Colorado Symphony, and it literally was taking place as women were marching onto the steps of our Capitol. Wow. Mm. Um, during the whole- Oh, I just got chills. It was, and, and I've accomplished a few things in my life, like these games. Um, I walked out on stage and no one did anything, but man, when those women walked down on stage, and these are the people that were there when the Higgs boson was discovered. These wow. were the women that launched Cassini into orbit to take pictures Just of Saturn. Just documentary on Cassini. <laughs> um, these women walk out and they say their names and it's standing ovation. I mean, chills. Yeah. One of them was a, a brilliant anthropologist and she was talking about, we are monkeys. And, and, and the, the reason why we've been able to evolve because evolution doesn't promote anything it just simply says survival of the fittest whoever right. fits in best to this is going to be the one that advances and she said is our our ability to cooperate and understand that if i do this i get something for this so if i you know beat my chest then i don't get banana but if i come to you and i'm nice i get banana <laughs> you know and so with Twitter, you just get a bunch of people going, ah, and they don't understand, why am I not getting my bananas? <laughs> and then we have people going, you know, why, why won't anybody give me bananas? And we're gonna <laughs> put up a wall to protect our bananas and keep these people away from getting our bananas. And that's... They're a good source of potassium. <laughs> <laughs> but we need, I need as, 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 a, as a growing human ape to make a mistake and go, if I beat my chest, I see look on your face and I hear your words and I go, oh, that doesn't get me a banana. Right. Uh, and that doesn't get you a banana and that doesn't help us as a society. But unless we- We get some bananas. <laughs> yeah, get some bananas now. Banana liqueur, preferably. We need to be- Don't, to... don't. Texas will be back here. Oh, I was gonna say, I bet he Do has not so. find, <laughs> we need to be able to we need to be able to be monkeys and beat our chest every once in a while and realize, oh, I feel terrible for doing that. Uh, we also need to be a, a, a people who c can make mistakes and not get crucified for making a mistake. You learn from your mistakes. Absolutely. And I just, that's the other thing. With, Redemption, with a lot of social, A lot of social media is just like, you make one mistake, you're, you're done. 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 And it could and be a mistake you made 10 years ago when yeah. you were none the wiser. 20. Dude. 20 years ago. If they had, if Twitter was around 20 years ago, if they I wouldn't be here. Life, yeah. I literally, I'd be an onion farmer somewhere. And I would, like, by the way, I, I would, it's good business. I would be lighting the torches to burn me down. I, I look back on the things that I said and did and the behavior that I had. I'm like, no, that's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, I should not but have But you done can't this. hold people accountable. These are not illegal for activities, by the way. I mean, I just, yeah. Yeah, be yeah. Clear. yeah, thank you, yeah. We're not talking about, you should be they ever find the bodies. Woo! You, you could rape anyone in, eight, in the 80s. It was no big deal. It's like, it's like you, 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 no, not that. We're talking about just 
you stupid know, stupid things, like stupid say. things, saying of things, grace. things right. that are are a, a considered everyone. offensive today, that weren't offensive and like things, that, mean, things what, that are offensive today were not offensive a year ago. This goes back to you your know. your yes. morality question, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually had a conversation. God, we've gone off on a tangent. Yeah, dude. I don't even know where we are right now. Our, our, we, I had a whole question. Uh, David, who's our assistant, is, is a, just a, a brilliant person and an incredible philosopher as well. And we were having a conversation between morals and ethics. Um, and do morals change versus ethics? Um, and I, I was saying that uh, morals are um, learned and ethics are imbued. So like society places ethics upon us. And he was like, well, actually, I would view it as the opposite. So I posed the question to you guys. You said, do morals change in that, mm. that question? So would you look at that and say, yeah, go back to your question and ask it again. <laughs> do you believe morality is universal or relative? Mm. So, man, that's a fantastic question. Because... Okay, Cupid. Yeah, they've got a few, and then they've got... Fuck your cousin? Fire or <laughs> fuck your cousin, or morality, universal, or relative. I could even say that that oh man, this is such a. Let's let it go. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it's gonna we're, just gonna. we're gonna be here forever going this. Not only that. I know you too well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I'll gonna have yeah. a really spiral. long answer. Oh yeah. <laughs> we're gonna be back on the third time we yeah. do this show. He's gonna be like, I want to go back to that. He'll probably do an entire hour-long panel. No, he's. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I think everything boils down to identity. Everything. Every, the answer's both. Move on. Got it. <laughs> Yes. It's well, I mean, more, yes, it's universal and relative. Let's also quickly it. touch on because I don't think I'm we got talking. you got, you got your uh, a proudest accomplishment because you said that you don't think it. I was trying to stall, man. I really don't know. You don't have. I mean, you yeah, don't have yeah. to. Have I don't know them. if I have an answer it to that could question. Could just be a That's collective. Okay. That's fine. Group of things you're proud of. I don't think that anybody needs to have a one proudest accomplishment. I'm I'm really proud of. The games, I'm trying to think of something I can take sole credit for. That, that, that's how I view an accomplishment. Like, um, Oh, thank you for that. Because I was, I was struggling with that. No, I'm right? serious. I was struggling with that going. Because I look at every game and I'm like, there's 300 people, there's 1,200 people that made this game. Sure. Um, so I can't take pride in that accomplishment. I can take, I can't even take credit for my work. Pick because, something. <laughs> no! <laughs> I should have you host the show. Yeah. No, it's funny because, no, because, the, he did, said something to help me. That your first instinct as a parent is my kids. My kids. Yeah. Uh, for me, the fact that they haven't died, I haven't killed them in 19 years, that's an accomplishment right? to right. me. It but is my excellent, excellent work. I think my like I don't Please know my personal one. Yeah. Because I, no, no, it's helped me. Because and this is something that why we, I think we, our show works and our friendship works so much, <laughs> is that. I, I wasn't sure about it till he said something that really sparked me. It's so if you talk like your accomplishment is something personal, like my kids, I can't say, "Oh, my kids," and everyone goes, "Ah, that's my wa my wife is more responsible for their beauty than I am." Because you're think. a one thrust pregnant. Because I'm, I'm a, no, I am I am literally like, "Where's my banana?" I must go back to that. Um, I think my accomplishment is. Just that point, and I don't know if people say, oh, it was so brave or whatever, is, is that I got to that point in my life by hook or by crook to go, I'm going to follow my heart into what I, I want to do mm -hmm. with no hope for financial, like I'm going to be a star or I'm going to be famous, I'm going to be rich. Nicole I just Williams. wanted to go to California. Oh, no, I, 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 I sold a car to get a one-way ticket. I got a one bag. I knew nobody. I slept in my car for a month and, and, and for a while. Did you say you sold your car? No, no, no. I, I had to get a, it was a rent a wreck and I remember it was a, a red Ford Festiva with a racing stripe and gray fake fur seats. Yeah, baby. And, wow. And, but I, <laughs> That's but, awesome. yeah. but I did it and it, it's just, it, there's something about that. My proudest accomplishment is just having the faith in myself to just, do whatever you want to do. I don't care if you want to be an electrician. Go, I'm going to be an electrician. I'm going to be the best damn electrician I can be. Or I'm going to go to college. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a plumber. It doesn't matter. Uh, that leap of faith in yourself. Uh, and I was a kid who struggled with confidence and esteem uh, growing up. Um, always trying to be everything for everybody else. And it was the one time in my life, and, and to be truthful, it was the time when I was just kind of, just I, I, I fed that beast so long, 
to be something that I, and I got to it going, oh shit, I don't want to be this person doing reporting. And I, I had signed with an agency that handled Peter Jennings and world, uh, all these big famous, and I was like, oh, I don't want it. Mm. I don't, and it was that tipping point, like I either go and follow this because there'll be more money and I'll, you know, and I can move my way up. And it was just, I'd rather be, bro I remember making this thing, I'd rather be broke and happy than have a, 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 a job, a, a profession. Mm -hmm. um, that you weren't happy. That I wasn't happy with. Absolutely. That's my proudest accomplishment. And, and you know, and, and it's been so difficult for me, I'm the, and he knows, I'm the kind of person has, I, to a fault, I have a very, very big problem with patting myself on the back. Yeah. But that's one, and I and Is it I realized your arms don't quite reach like mine. Well, I have I'm just so muscular. Issues. It's mm. just it's just so muscular. Just so muscular. No, but I think that's the thing, I, and I think that's a, a, something that I, I, from this point forward in my life, is like to tell people, hey, recognize yourself. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to be a, 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 a jerk about it, but privately or, or just inside, just recognize your accomplishments, your okay. achievements, pat yourself on the back because, and then set a goal to pat yourself again down the road. Absolutely. You know, as you go into your 30s, have goals that you set and, and all along the way, know that, you know, you did this. You made these things happen. You guys, you, your achievements as you move forward is like something that you did because then the people around you, they, they will gain from your success yeah. of you, you know, treating yourself right. I've talked about this before. I think I posted something on Twitter the other day. Um, the difference between cockiness and confidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it often gets mistaken for one another. Absolutely. And cockiness is the, the absence of confidence. Yeah. Or the Ooh. facade. I confidence. like that. <laughs> that should be a bumper sticker. But I believe. It, it's one of my pet peeves when there's someone who is confident in what they're doing and is finally feeling confident in where they are in life or how they're performing or whatever it is, where to an outside perspective it could be confused as cockiness. This person's being cocky. Sure. No, they're actually proud of who they are and what they're doing and what they're accomplishing. So to call them cocky almost just takes that completely away from them. An insecure person would do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so that's just one of my pet peeves I see, especially the, on online media. I believe it starts with this. Being able to, two words, just say thank you. Mm. Somebody used to bust my balls because we'd you know, get done playing a, a one of those playing in a band, we'd get done with our set and be like, great job tonight, man. I'd be like, oh, no, nah, man, the sound was off and my voice cracked in this one thing. And someone finally put it to me in these terms. He said, modesty is the epitome of arrogance. Mm -hmm. Modesty yeah, is Mariel. the epitome yeah, of arrogance. Like yeah, because it's almost, <laughs> it's almost insulting to that guy that just complimented you. It's just my opinion yeah, right. is more sense. important than yours. So just say thank you and go, thank you. And, and leave it at that. Um, it's hard though. It's one of the reasons why I do conventions is because it's the hardest thing for me to do is to take a compliment and when you've been a part of some really incredible projects like he and I both have, if someone comes up to you and says, the last of us changed my life, it's one of the greatest things I've ever experienced. I, I want to go, you really need to be telling that to Neil Druckmann or you need to be... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of so people that go into so many, this. Yeah. Yeah. Just go, th what I need to be right now is just a vessel to receive your gratitude and just go, thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so glad that. So means glad you it. enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's it. And I feel like once you do that, and if you don't have people in your life that are saying, "Good job, way to go. I'm proud of you. You're doing awesome," you need to examine the people that are in your sphere, and there needs to be a culling of people because if you don't have not sycophants, but I'm talking about people that are constantly going, "I'm really proud of you. I'm you're, will lift you up." That will lift you up is supposed to bring you down. Then what that means is you're trying to prove yourself to all the people that don't matter. And there's some people that need to get out of your life. Yeah. You guys ever thought about being therapists? Yeah, or have yeah, you ever thought about this being is the therapist? best TED talk I've ever. I know. Been to. Thank <laughs> I've you for coming to my head. No, but it's it, you know, it's, to. It's, it should be read. It's and, important. Yeah, it be. It's it's important. I mean, we he and I talked about this at length. It's it's, and I was one of the worst at it too. I mean, I just uh, you know I would legitimize everything. I would I mar excuse me I would marginalize everything. Somebody said, oh, "Wow, nice car." Like, oh, it's a lease. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, like I didn't deserve. You don't want to be seeming like you're showing off. Right. Yeah, or but you, but there's a yeah. certain point. It's like no, you're not showing off. It's just, it's like you, you if, whether it's, it, it's acknowledge anything. their opinion, acknowledge oh. them, and and um, yeah, you know, just and and it, I.
the cockiness and confidence. I remember I've met so many like uh, actors, uh, you know, like I, 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 you know, met some some names, big names, and you meet one and you just go, what is it about makes that guy just a jerk? He's doing so well. He's got millions. And then I remember I met Anthony Hopkins, and he was so human and so just grabbed me by the arm and said, so what have you been working on lately? And it, 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 so this is somebody who I respect more than anything. And then you go, well, wait a minute, that's confidence. Mm -hmm. That guy is cocky. Right. That guy has something to prove. And what I, re what I look, look back on was somebody like Anthony Hopkins, there was such a, a calmness and I know I'm good. I know, I know how to do what I'm doing. I'm glad you enjoy it and look you in the eye and, and tell you, so, so, um, so what, have, what about you? What have you been? And he just was so human, nothing to prove, confidence. And the other guys, yeah, I'm gonna do this and do this. You know, I'm a mover, shaker. And you're like, mm. just like, cockiness. Uh, cockiness, uh. Needs, cockiness needs you to believe in me. Mm. Confidence is I believe in me. Mm. Put it on a license plate. Wow. That's a big, <laughs> if you have like a well, European license plate, you can right, do that. Right, there you go. You right. Oh, that's, that's You're digging into the box of or issues. Box. We're gonna do a box of issues to end the show. Okay. We have people it's write kind in. Of, um, I think it's, it's right up, right up the alley. Right, right up here. Kind of talking. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this one's uh, from someone named Sasha C. And okay. Sasha writes, hello. <laughs> First off, hey Sasha. Great way to start. <laughs> First off, thank you for making this podcast. I listen to it religiously and hope to start my own this year. Oh, awesome. I just have one question. How do you feel when you took the big leap in your careers? For example, one of my friends quit his job to focus full time on his acting career. In my case, I want to quit my current job, but I am nervous about making the career change. How did you guys feel? And what advice would you give to someone who is ready, but very cautious? Mm. And you spoke to this a little bit just before. Go. Yeah, um, for me, I kind of, uh, I used to think uh, that I, I, well, I had hit rock bottom. There's nowhere but up. And living in a uh, basement apartment in New York City, uh, 122nd in Amsterdam, if Wolf. anybody knows where it is, um, with uh, like is that even in New York? rats, rats, <laughs> rat, the rats crawling around outside the world. The rat was your landlord. The rats were like, hey, 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 we're coming in. We're coming in. We nibble. Uh, and, and fuck that, they bite. They <laughs> flat out bite. No, uh, so, but when I, you know, so I, I, I used to feel like, I was like, well, I have nothing to lose, but I did. I did have a lot. I had stuff to lose. But I, I found that, <laughs> it's terrible, and parents hate when I say this, but there's no plan B. Mm. There's really no plan B. It's like, well, I'm going to give it six months and see how it goes. Well, it's not, I don't. Don't, you know, it's not gonna work most of the time. Nine times out of 10, it's not gonna work if you give yourself, I'm gonna give a timeline that I have to be making this kind of money, but right. it is a leap of faith in yourself that I believe, I, I remember that the success is in the journey. The success is in the trying. If you can look in the mirror and say, if I don't try, am I gonna be okay in, in 15, 20 years mm. that I never gave it a shot? Uh, and if you think you'll be okay because you have a nice house and you have a job and a family and whatever, then then don't do it. Don't. Um, they, they used to say, if you can do anything else, do it. And the point is, it's, it, it, it's in your heart. Can you do anything else? Um, I remember calling buddies from a Warner Brothers lot. I'm like, back in New England, I'm like, you're not gonna believe this, I just read for friends. They're like, you're gonna be on the show? I'm like, no, I didn't get it, but I'm on Warner Brothers lot. I'm looking up at the water tower right The now. water tower, and, I and, read and, for and guess what? I, I can walk around and they don't ask any questions, and I would walk around the studio, yeah. and just to kind of see what it was. And then I ended up shooting two television shows on that lot. Wow. Um, um, you know, I, I've been there countless times for some voiceover stuff. Um, did, did a movie there. I mean, it just comes around, it, it, and... Uh, for me, it was just, again, it's just, if you're doing it, there's so many people who would dream to go on an audition. People ask me, well, how do you handle a rejection? You're never, you're never, if, you're never bad if you've gotten to that point. You never, you, I mean, you, if you go and you, um, how do I put this? It, it's like, you, if you, you're never wrong. You're, you're just not the right 
person for that that job. That's, like, a hard, that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. Yeah, but yeah. they but they oh, have to understand yeah. that. But it's not you. Yeah. If you sit there and go, <laughs> it's not personal. They needed a guy who has. I once lost a job to a guy who had blue eyes because I'm, I'm brown. They like it was as simple as that. They the blue eyes. So you can so, it, yeah. Yeah, we almost didn't like, want you on the show because right. Of I, I we know. only could have one brown But the context yet. made my eyes water. And that would look like I was crying <laughs> the whole time. But I appreciate you letting me do, use my, my beady little brown this is a great, chocolate nuggets. This is a great <laughs> character actor. Um, he's one of those guys uh, named Glenn Morshower. And Texas boy. And he taught me a great lesson, which is he used to play racquetball with a buddy of his every Friday. And on the weekend that he was getting married, he said, hey, I can't play racquetball because his in-laws were coming in. And so he didn't say, I have to audition for my in-laws. He said, I'm going to meet my in-laws. And the distinction between those two definitions is everything. Because audition means that you're going in to try to prove yourself. Mm. And a meeting is, I'm walking in to show you what the role looks That's like. So he well wasn't put. trying out for the role of the son-in-law. Yeah. He's like, this is who you're, you're, she's marrying me. This is right. who I am. You go in and you show them what the role looks like. They can disagree with you, but you at least go in there and you do your work and you leave. Show them what the role looks like as you. As you. Through you. And you, you always say this really good as far as like, I never try to play a character. I'm me as a doctor. I'm me as a cop. I'm that's, me. That's when things changed for me. I remember going in and I was reading for something and let's uh, say the character's name was Kevin. And, and, Kevin? and a guy, and, and, and my Kevin? buddy sat there and he goes, don't go in playing Kevin, the lawyer. Play you as the lawyer who happens to be named Kevin. Right. And it's... Kevin Seems like Miller. such a simple thing. Kevin. By the way, by the way, <laughs> not a good name for me. Um, <laughs> no, but but it, 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 it's 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 so it's it's simple, but it's profound in your thinking and how you handle it. I've never heard that. I love that, right? But That's I love great. that. It's like you're not auditioning. My only other favorite one was Bill Nye. When you get to a certain Bill, Bill Nye, the famous actor, he will go into audition. Always like the science guy. And sits down. Oh, Bill Nye, um, uh, Davy Jones yes. in, in the Pirates movies. And there's a famous story that he will go in to uh, a meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I don't call them auditions anymore. I, I call them meeting. I've got a meeting. Um, but you go in, and he sat down, and the producers and directors and everybody's there. Bill, all right, and he has his sides, so and good. he sits down and just crosses his legs. So, and before they could say anything, he said, so how can I help you? Because That's if confidence. you really, truly yeah. think about it, That's you're there to help them. Mm -hmm. Potentially, and then if an actor can sit there and go, "How may I be of help?" That's how he yeah. says it. How may I be of help? Like, come in, like, so you know who I am, or you you've called me in because of my picture, if I'm if I haven't proven, or, or my resume, you or you saw me in that little thing, or whatever. How, so you know kind of what I am. So tell me what you're looking for, and let me see if we can marry this up together. If not. It's fine. The only other bit of advice I ever give anybody like that is don't begrudge other people's success. Yeah. Because it's not personal that that person got it over you or whatever. Well, we, there's a the saying I love is comparison is a thief, thief of, of joy. joy. Yeah. Which is 100 percent true. And I've had to remind myself of that dozens Constantly. of times. Sure. And that's okay. That's yeah. the other thing. It's okay. You know, we can say these things, and but it took years for me to be truly believe it. Mm. You know, it's, it's, and, um, Epictetus, all his opinion. So all back to that Sarah's question. specific question. I love the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, right? Mm -hmm. He's, he's sitting there and he's holding his dad's journal and it says, elite from the lion's head. And so he's standing there and he's looking at the abyss and he puts one foot out and he just l puts all of his weight forward and his foot finds what looks, you know, like as emptiness, but you see from the side, there's a, been a bridge there the entire time. Mm -hmm. And I think that, whether it's acting, music, any endeavor in your life at mm -hmm. one point is going to require you to take a lion's leap or a leap from the lion's head. And the difference is, um, I agree with that. If you can do anything else to this, because this is more volatile in the stock market. Um, but if you don't care if you fall, mm. Um, if you're worried about the fall, wait. It's it's the fact that I have to do this. The reason why Indy put his foot forward is because he knew that if he didn't, his dad was going to die. 
And so sometimes life will push you to a place where you're like, I don't have any, other, I have to do this. If I don't, my head's gonna explode. Yeah. If I don't, I'm gonna sit there. My 90 year old self is speaking to me going, take the leap. Right, yeah. and, and remember, I truly believe there's no such thing as failure right. if you've tried. Right. It, it, you, you may, it, it may not work out the way where you, you where you think it's supposed to be. Listen, I came to LA and I'm, I, I had done theater and stand up and I was gonna go and be on a sitcom. Whoa, we're gonna be on a sitcom. Uh, my first job was a soap opera and all my friends laughed. Like, what are you doing, you're a doctor on a soap opera? I'm like, <laughs> hey, they're paying me, I don't care. Right. That went five years and then, you know, I, I didn't, People said, "Well, did you always know we're gonna video games were video oh, games were going to be great. <laughs> video games were going to be a big hit. My career has not gone at all the path, My but idea. I was willing to take the oars out of the boat, uh, out of the water, put them in the boat, and just go. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of rapids, but the rapids are fun. So you Hell go yeah. through those things. It's it's once you take that step from the lion's head, like he said, once you take that leap, you're a success." Yep. In Regardless. your heart, you should be a success. If it works out financially or over time that, 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 and you are continue to do that, that's great. If you at one point say, you know what, um, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm quitting the business. I hate that word, no, you, I'm quitting. It's like, no, I'm just gonna take myself to a different direction because, yeah. because I've, I've tried this to a certain point where it's not fulfilling me anymore. So I'm gonna move over to this, this part of my life now. You can reinvent yourself in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s sometimes. So uh, I, I just, I think once you put that, 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 take that leap of faith in yourself, I think you're successful. Yeah. And, and that's where you, um, that's why it's no plan B. Try it. Try it or suffer the regret. And I, yeah. I hate regret. That's Regret's the one thing I try to anything. avoid. Was it, was it Ponce de Leon who said when they arrived in the new world, they burned the ships? It's like there's there's no way home. We're here, you know. This whether we it. live or die, this is it for us. Yeah, but he said it in Spanish. Uh, I feel like everything you guys say, we just yes. need to like be snapping. I know this is the most in inspirational episode. I don't think had. there's <laughs> anything I could possibly add to that. Nope. You guys have said it. Definitely not. But back to the cousin fucking. <laughs> yes. Let's always go back. <sighs> Maybe we'll talk about that in the post show. Yeah. We're uh, we're actually Terry, at time. I'm gonna call you, buddy. So we're gonna <laughs> have to wrap things up. You. But we do have a post show with you guys that we're gonna be answering another question cool. for the audience. Um, I can't express my gratitude enough for you guys being here and for being on the really show. Appreciate it. Thank you. Guys. Um, hopefully we can get you guys back in the future. Yeah. You're some of my favorite people. Even you, know it. Even me? You're, you're my favorite person I, I, I'm, like, I'm like moss. I grow on people. You too. <laughs> and trees. Just the north side. They Get it? Because my name. I didn't plan that. That's good. Right? That's a good one. Uh, Cheers, yes. my friends. Thank Cheers. you so much for being here. Thank you, guys. Hey, clean, 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 clean. Hey YouTube, if you like this video, Troy, what should they do? Why, they should subscribe. Who's that little button there? They made a nice shiny one for just that purpose. And check out the other videos. <gasps> oh.